previously on Into the Yonder Void. We were set up to make a distraction and try and get the kids out of the cave. Gil was inside. He met a prince, I guess? And Can had taken the horns and some of the other kith uh, with her and Madrigal over to our designated spot to drop off the horns. And we tried... <laughs> tried is the key word, but... Fee and I tried to uh, get into the cave. I stumbled a little bit, and I panicked and tried to sell uh, one of the gith a a, a book uh, that I found earlier, and we somehow knocked him out, which is nice. And then Gil emerged from the cave, and he said that he had the Basidi children in tow, but the leader of the gith was still there. The D20 Syndicate presents Into the Yonder Void. Welcome back to the D20 Syndicate Podcast. Hey! hey. How goes it, nerds? A weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5e actual play podcast. I am your host and DM, Seth, and around the table we have our players. I'm Billy and I play Nezra. I'm Tomas, I play Gil. I'm Lindsay, and I play Fee. And I'm Michaela, and I play Can. That's right. Each week we record for your listening pleasure. This is episode, well, this is season two, episode 38. 38 special. 38. 38 special. I like 38 more than 37. Just hold on loosely. <laughs> Don't let it go. <laughs> Anybody else know any lyrics from that song? If you cling too tightly, you're gonna lose control. <laughs> <laughs> 38. <laughs> we did it, gang. Woo! Pack it up. <laughs> yes. Uh, if, if this is your first foray into the D20 Syndicate podcast, we are a musically... Uh, challenge. Challenge, <laughs> challenge group. Uh, singing bad, bad covers. Um, that's all we do. For that's our shtick. Six and a half hours each episode, so... Yeah. And that was the one we just did. That was it. So. I'm so caught up in you. Yeah. So, I mean, after editing, it's probably going to be like 10 seconds. But yeah, just know it was six and a half hours of us singing. All right. Bye, guys. I'm exhausted. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, we have a review. <gasps> Say. Yes. What? This might not count as a review uh, to some people, but on our Instagram, somebody commented on one of our posts and it seemed quite reviewy. So here I am reading that review. This is from <laughs> Dylan, Dylan on Instagram. <laughs> Listening to episode 36 right now, all caps. And uh, I love this episode. <laughs> I love this podcast so much. It has got me back into D and D yeah. itself. Hell yeah. That's, Thank awesome. you. Yeah. That's the episode right before I come in. So he probably stopped. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah there he, would, he wouldn't have been yeah. talking about season two yet. Yeah, he's so excited. And then, what the fuck is this? Who's? It's like Poochie. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm have to go. My planet Poochie. needs me. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, oh nope, new element. I'm out. Ooh, <laughs> uh, ooh. <laughs> I don't, don't like this guy. I don't do chain. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan. Not yeah. a fan. Yeah. Thank you, Dylan. Thank Thanks, you, Dylan. Dylan. Thank you, Thanks, Dylan. Dylan. I wonder what it is. That is making people like want to do D and D. I'm telling by you, listening to I'm it. telling you, they're like, "Fuck these guys! I could do this better." Yeah. <laughs> they're just not good. <laughs> no, I gotta welcome. fix it. If I show you how, it, how it's done. if I can jerk us off a little bit, I think it's based. <laughs> <laughs> it's Go ahead. No, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, maybe ask first. Um, yeah. I mean, he kind of did. It wasn't a very well, direct question. Like, I'm gonna start, if, but I'm telling you as I'm you starting. Will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So second yeah, review if you, from If you will Seth. allow me, proceed okay. with the I would like to with jerk your second, us off for yeah, a second. Next <laughs> um, which is always a great way to start any conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Especially man, with your boss. Please jerk yeah. you off. <laughs> if I can allow. If I may jerk you off. I guess I just started here, but. <laughs> if I can jerk you off for a second. Um, is the bathroom situation at work? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> One stall, no lock. Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, Brandy, uh, if I could bend your ear for a second, just jerk you off. One moment. 
I ordered a salad, and this is a salad with <laughs> pasta on it. <laughs> well, like, what is that? For just one second, I would like to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> just using it wrong all yeah, the time. That's the best part. Or like you're trying to squeeze through the seats at a I movie just theater. Oh, excuse for a me. Second. Second. Sorry, get sorry. Out sorry. Off right through here. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I mix my metaphors a lot, but I guess that's just the way the cookie falls from the tree. <laughs> yeah, don't have an orgy about it. <laughs> uh, uh, what were you gonna say? Yeah. I don't fucking remember. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, uh, I was say, if I could jerk us off for a second. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's probably the camaraderie. I feel Aww. like that's almost definitely because we we have excellent. <laughs> Mika's shaking her head. Sadly. <laughs> More like come. Ro- oh. oh. I don't. L- I expect that from your husband. <laughs> That's my kind of from debauchery. That's mine. It is my words. <laughs> it's me, it's my Billy. Blood. Look at my blood, guys. Lindsay says, "Come all the time at <laughs> home." Oh, I wasn't doing that. I was doing the awe oh, and camaraderie. Well, you really you, emphasized the come. You were. Uh, Everyone. No. We all thought you were that. emphasizing I the come. That's why I said I expect that shit from your husband. This is like the oh, eggplant emoji. Oh, no, I can't. Again. It's crackling like yeah, crazy. It oh look. no! Like it is nonstop crackling for me. Mine's gone. Uh-oh. Okay, mine just stopped. Do you need to... Is it... Don't touch it. No. She's not hearing it now. Did you rub your arm on it? <laughs> I touched it. I'm not touching it now. Is it crackly for Billy still? No. He, he said literally it's Was stopped. it just your left? No, it's both. Oh, weird. Mine was just to the left. It's done. <laughs> it's over. Yes, so drop I it. I thought you were yelling at me <laughs> for the... Tomas. I thought you were yelling so at me for the... the camaraderie? <laughs> I was just going to say, so yeah, camaraderie. Yeah. Um, anyway. I, I'm, I'm uh, walking that back. <laughs> um... Yeah. Come or we used, we used to be better at faking it, but it's yeah. odd. Moments Adorable. away from fighting. It's cute. Nope. Now it's time for tonight's <laughs> around the campfire question. More like come fire. We, we <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Uh, that's, that's the content I expect uh, from that side of the table. Sorry. Everyone here is grounded. Okay, that makes sense. That's fair. Even for the odd. From what? Like the Nintendo. Everything. <gasps> Not everything. Come on, I gotta do stuff. You can breathe. Are you for real? And you can have water. That's it. Yes. Tight. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't specify. I have my flavored water. Peach flavored water. He's oh, living the high beer. life. <laughs> can I have snacks, though? Tonight's around the campfire <laughs> question. Uh, I want to know, are there any gods or deities that you observe? Any... Uh, even like spirits of the world of nature, anything like that, that you observe. And if you do tell me why and a little bit about them. So today I am going to start with Gil. Uh, no, not really. Uh, my mom and the rest of the Brody side of the family, there are always like, uh, use the gods if you can, but they're only a means to an end. So I don't really affiliate with the gods. I'm sure they're pretty cool and stuff if you get to know them, but it's not my bag. Very nice. Thank you. Can. Well, of course, like, I respect the moons, but I don't, like, interact with them much or anything. I just kind of look up at them sometimes, and I'm like, thank you. (laughs) What you do. Thank you for being a friend. A moon. (laughs) But one spirit that I think is pretty cool is Veridolt, the spirit of plant life. Uh, Tell uh, tell me a little bit about, you said Veridolt? Veridolt. Veridolt. Uh, Tell me a little bit about Veridolt. Oh, Veridolt controls all plant life. And I think that's how I'm able to read trees and stuff. Mm. Oh, very nice. Are there any rituals that are involved in this at all? Well, it's kind of like you you concentrate a little bit and you you try to like center your focus on on you know the the being that you're trying to communicate with. You can't think of it as like a plant that you're going to eat or something. Because <laughs> then you're eating him. <laughs> you got to think of it as like an equal. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Nezra. So I actually denounce deities as a general rule. <laughs> I believe any one being shouldn't be worshipped or revered in such a way, and that all beings should treat each other with equality and as they'd want to be treated. Gotcha. 
as an anti-paladin of the restless black. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'll put a fucking car bomb on you. (laughs) Um, And uh, what what led you to this uh, line of thought? With the teachings of Valdak, my surrogate father, he let me know that he had studied Bahamut and Perthire and what essentially led to a rift in our people. And I didn't like any one being having such power and sway over everybody and how they treated each other. Very nice. Thank you. And Fee. So the Firbolg people, they they really, really were into the god of knowledge. Rift talk it is. So, uh, yeah. But... um. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I mean, they did a lot of a lot of cool things for the com- Furbold community, but um, they weren't. I mean, they didn't really do a whole lot when you know what happened to that community at the end there. So I don't know. I'm a little bittersweet about that one, but um, yeah, that's mostly what I know. I've read about some cool ones. I'm interested in them, but I don't really. I don't know. Have any specific one that I am drawn to? I guess at this point. Very nice. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. You're welcome. No Warcrag fans up in here. (laughs) (laughs) Or cry about it. (laughs) I'm not him. (laughs) Okay, Tomar. Tomar Jr. (laughs) He's your dad. Uh, That doesn't even make sense. (laughs) What is happening? All right. When we last left off, y'all were... Uh, well, some of you were exiting the cave. Others had fallen down the outside of the cave. Hey. <laughs> yeah, <you fell. laughs> and oh. yet others <laughs> were off in a different section by themselves almost uh, dealing with other bullshit. To clarify, Gil, you emerged from the cave uh, after unshackling and uncaging these children. The That's right, children. Sif. <laughs> That's I didn't like how that sounded. Uh, <laughs> um, Would you like to hang out later, Seth? <laughs> Are you going to the mall? Later? Pop open some brewskis, go bowling. <laughs> um, you and the uh, uncaged prince now um, uh, have exited the the cave to find Nez and Fee outside, who had been busy with the distraction. Off in the distance. Still uh, not that far away, maybe, you know, 30 to 50 feet away. There's a cluster of of uh, the gith. And uh, in front of you is their war chief standing ready for action. Can you were in this clearing and a group of gith were trying to attack you and you were able to entangle them with trees and get back to... Madrigal's craft after <laughs> making Swiss, Swiss cheese of any survivors <laughs> oh clinging God. to the magnet. Um, Yeesh. But yeah, so that is where we will pick up now. Yes. Can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you arrive at the craft, the door popped open and a hand grabs you and yanks you inside and the door closes again. And Madrigal standing there, he's like, his face is red. He's looking around nervously. Uh, sh- should we go back? Yeah. Uh, um. Okay. Uh. I. I'm. I. I must say though that that it is uh, uh the sh- the protective barriers on the on this craft are quite low, so we cannot sustain any more damage. Or what? Or the entire craft will be destroyed. It will be unable to. Utilize the magical seals that allow it to float. Oh. So, um... Yeah, maybe you should, like, call your, uh, your boss and tell him that you're in trouble. I don't... I don't... Uh, I don't really have a boss. I've got superiors, Your but, colleague, then. Uh, I don't... I don't know if they could, uh, do anything in time. It is quite a distance to dragon water. Uh, but, uh, so uh, what I'm thinking is we have to get these children on here, right? Well, we don't necessarily have to get the kids on here, because there's, like, a tunnel that goes back. Okay, so I just need to bring you back. Yeah, we gotta go fight. Uh, we? Well, I do, but you have to take me. 
<laughs> the dead panda. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, um, yes, I can get you close. Unfortunately, I believe that th- there's so much damage that if I... Uh, let's just go, and I can explain I on the say, way. Is the ship getting hammered right now? It's as not, because are... they're, they're still, like, working oh, on the, okay. the trees. Do you have any weapons on the ship or anything like that? Uh, I don't have any weapons, and the... It flies up in the air, uh, the craft, and uh, then he starts booking it back in the direction. But I do have some some items I could give you to, to, to help. Um, w- one moment, and he, like, goes over to this, like, little section of the inside where there, it's like there's like a bunch of destroyed stuff around it because if you'll remember the portal the rift that was opened kind of threw everything into chaos but uh he goes over to a what appears to be like a small chest um like a little treasure chest and rather than opening it up he taps the sides and it slides back revealing a panel in the ground yes. the floor that's fun and he immediately starts like pilfering in there and he looks like he takes out a like just a handful of cloth, and he runs it back over to you and hands it to you. There's some items here. You can utilize them. Um, I They're still in the prototype stage, but you can absolutely use them. I open it up. Oh, you, like, kind of unravel yeah. it? Uh, there is a, what appears to be a scarf with a, like, shimmering pattern of eyes all over it. Just... Mm. Dozens and dozens and dozens of eyes all over it. What are you smirking about? Taking a second here, uh, <laughs> D&D Beyond is cool, and they frequently update it. Um, so normally I have, like, sneak attack, favored foe, and dreadful strikes, like, extra damage die that I have to roll, and I usually have to bring up, like, the dice corner on the side. They added all of those to the attack section now, so they're nice. all down below, and oh, I can nice. just click them, boom. Oh, I love that shit. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's good. Oh, hell yeah. My magic stone. Yeah, dude. Sick. <laughs> Sick nasty. <laughs> so you, uh, there's one is like, a, it's, so this scarf is, has patterned like lustrous eyes all over it. It's a, it's a red scarf, uh, and the eyes are outlined in black and then like silver, uh, is in the inside of the eye. Um, there's also what appears to be a, like a thick furred cape. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, animal fur of some kind. Uh, you're not, you wouldn't necessarily know just from looking at it, but it looks like a, a nice, sturdy quality cape. Might even be good for a little bit of warmth. There is a cloak that looks as though it is it has patterned uh, like little ice patterns around the hem, um, and the rest of the cloak is like a is a dark, dark purple. And there's also a strange animal skull that has been, like, it's just, like, the top portion of it. It looks like maybe a bird of some kind, and the, it looks like it is some sort of cap, like a literal skull cap. And he, like, he, like, looks at you. Okay, so, um, so that is the Scarf of Eyes. Sorry, my naming conventions are, uh, I I haven't technically named it yet. Uh, and then there's the uh, Cape of Conviction, and, uh, there's the the Skull Cap of Sorrows, and, uh, the Cloak of Curses. So, uh, those, uh, I can give you a quick rundown of what you can expect, uh, with that, and I'll tell you what each one does. Yes. Okay. The Scarf of Eyes, uh, is going to give advantage on initiative rolls. You cannot be surprised if you're wearing it, and it gives you a plus one to AC. The Cape of Conviction gives you a plus one to Persuasion, and a plus one to Attack, and a plus one to AC. What does that one look like? Uh, the Cape of Conviction is, like, the furred cloak. Uh, it's like a light blue cloak with like a grayish animal fur of some kind Ooh. around the like collar and shoulder area. The skull cap of sorrows allows one use of bane per day without using a spell slot. You get advantage on in- intimidation rolls and you get plus one AC. And the cloak of curses uh, allows the user to use bestow curse once per day without using a spell slot. Can cast vicious mockery once per day without using a spell slot and plus one AC. Damn, son. Uh, then he, like, looks at you. Uh, he, there's, uh, I, I'm sorry, there's not five. I know you have f- five members of your group right now, uh, but uh, uh, you could probably distribute those to, to your friends uh, once you get there. That It might help. Um, oh, yeah, them. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
just putting it all on. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I say as I swish the scarf over her shoulder. <laughs> Are you going to put any of them on? Yeah. You going to put the scarf on? I'm going to put all of it on because I don't want to have to carry it in my hands. Okay. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> you currently have plus four AC. Uh, <laughs> Um, so you've got this skull cap of what, yeah, like I said, it looks like a bird skull, but like the beak is also bone and sitting on top and it's got some like dangly little, uh, like tassels hanging off of it. Uh, Ooh, Nez would look cool with that. You've got the scarf wrapped around your neck. You've got the cloak on and the cloak is it for you. It's like almost floor length, but for anybody else, it'd be a little bit shorter. And then you've got the, uh, the cloak. Yeah. You're kind of swimming in that cloak, but you can still walk around and move freely. And then that's when Madrigal just kind of like looks around nervously, can. Um, so the issue I was mentioning is the seal for lowering has been damaged. So I will not be able to go to a lower altitude, but I can get you there. Well, can you get me down? Uh, I can open the door. That isn't helpful. <laughs> um, okay. Use the cape and the cloak as wings and, and then <laughs> <strap them. laughs> Uh, and you guys start rocketing there. The rest of you, I need initiative rolls as the Gith War Chief. Oakley, like, Oakley. Hefts. <laughs> <laughs> Fee, you've changed. Uh, hefts his spear and. Oh, natural 20. Nice. So, what did you guys do? supposed get? to save that for attacks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 24. It. Five. Wow. Shazba. <laughs> Rolled great, both yeah. of us. <laughs> Five and eight. Wrong. It's golf rules, right? Under, yeah. <laughs> it means Under I go 10, first because it's the lowest. Oh, Jesus. I just rolled a one. Oh, good. <laughs> Eat shit. Keep it going. <laughs> Eat please, shit. Please, please. <laughs> Keep using whatever dice you use. Well, that wasn't for the enemy. Uh, oh. Hey, it was for my spleen. Natural 20. For your for the enemy? Well, yeah. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I want to see the 20s when we're fighting, unless it's the baddies. Now, Use your one dice for the bandits. Now I'm rolling for the enemy. One, 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 one. He won't tell us. We have mm. to find out, Billy. Yeah, we have to trick him. Okay. Um, throwing a pen at his eye. <laughs> <laughs> this is like poker. Can you read his face to see what they got? <laughs> Lady, mm. He got Lady Gaga. <laughs> a four, a seven, and a 12. So as you guys... <laughs> Prepare. I assume everyone's getting prepared for fighting. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. The first thing you guys notice is this like heavily bearded, like really tattered looking individual that you guys haven't really met. Uh, but he's holding like basically handles with blades on them that look like they were made out of very cheap material. Uh, they're made out of like bone and wood. And he has like they. Like you hold the handle horizontally, and the blade kind of goes out from the from the tops of your hands. Oh, so, like a tonfa, but yeah. like a blade uh, yeah. instead. Yeah, like a bladed tonfa in a sense. A bit Voldo-ish, I guess, if for Soul Caliber fans. Hmm. Um, Ooh. sort of. Ooh. Actually, I don't even know if that's accurate. He has the claws. Okay, gotcha. Is uh, it like Wolverine? With There's like a grip right blade. here and then a blade sticking out. So yep. you're like, eh. okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm with you now. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't know any of the references. <laughs> you speak Lindsay very well. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing that goes, who? <laughs> uh, so he, he, uh, he's first to act. And since you guys are, uh, Gil and this gentleman are in kind of like the shallow water of the ravine that exits the cave. So kind of like this. <clears throat> That's the fingers like gripping it. Uh, oh, oh, that's what I pictured. Oh, that's not. I pictured Tonfa. that from your that's a description. Katar. Yeah, that's yeah, a Katar. Katar. yeah. So that's what they are. That's not a guitar. This thing. That's a guitar. I'm dude. sorry. Yeah, yeah guitar. Silly. Yeah, today. Everyone knows get a guitar. I am very exactly good at playing the guitar. <laughs> but like a really cheap version of that, made out of very poor quality material okay. <laughs> that was evidently found. All right, Guitars. All right. Oh, nice. Mm, yeah. right. Very cool. Halo blades. Punching um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and he's he's the first to act, and you guys watch as he just zips forward kind of at a diagonal for a second, and the water's just like... And he immediately launches right towards the left flank of the... Whoa. The left flank of the creature runs up, and starts slicing at this war chief. 
And with his first attack, he hits. You guys watch as he takes a big slice. And it's a decent slice. You you guys watch as the uh, the Gith war chief is just like, oh, and he immediately, you notice, turns and takes his spear and tries to swipe back at this guy. Yo, he's got legendary actions. Shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shit. Uh-oh. Unfortunately for the <laughs> the war chief, he swings and he doesn't even get a chance. He like is too close. It's not it's not a good swing and this guy with the beard brings his katar up and just immediately blocks it. Like no no issue whatsoever. Mm. He got a natural one. Um, that is the first interaction of this battle. Gil, it's your turn. I'm going to run to his other flank and give him a hefty stab from behind. Okay. Yeah, that's a 22. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, you hit. A 22 definitely does hit. Sorry, I got to pull this up. So that's eight plus 20 total, two of its psychic. Oh, wow. Okay. Gotcha. 20 total, two of its psychic. So you ju- you like jab him with this, like this with his, the rapier. His back's kind of turned to you. He just and one thing that's curious about it happening, like my shadow's arm reaches out like past my arm and starts swirling around it in like a corkscrew, and then it like goes up the blade as I stab him. Okay, nice, very cool. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> um, and he immediately turns on you now. Oh shit! Gil, and <laughs> and. <laughs> like swipes down with his spear. Did he have a fire sword too? Is this a different guy? He had a spear. 19. Does a 19 hit you? It does. All right. He swings down with the spear and connects with you. So the damage to you, Gil, is 15. Ouch! (laughs) What kind of damage? Uh, It's just going to be slashing damage. Okay. Nothing extra that you notice. All right. And he swings downward with it? Yeah, kind of like a downward angle, okay. like diagonal. It looks very, like, well-oiled. And it's it's weird. It's almost as if it was, like, this automatic reaction from being hit. Now it is his turn. So he sees both of you guys, like, on either side, and it looks like he's taking a quick second to decide between what he wants to do. I point at the prince. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... He, instead of like immediately attacking, he raises his like he raises his chin, and you just hear this like hissing whistle, and you watch over his shoulder, Gil, as three of the other Gith that were marching away, chasing the like now dispersing fireworks, turn as if commanded by some force and begin racing towards you where they won't get there until are they all on the same side or some from either side you can take that those top three there so yeah they're all on the same side if you scroll down slightly like and that? yep and they go I was just gonna say they go right behind the uh, prince and uh, they're leveling their weapons do you want them like within five feet yeah okay and uh, yeah that's the end of his turn fee um, so I, did I see the three guys come You, up you can see everything that's on the map right now. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and whip out, eh, I'm going to start with Eldritch Blast just to kind of see how they respond. Okay. Know, get a lay of the land and such. You got two beams now, just so you know. I do. So you got to roll for each one. And, oh, uh, by the way, are you, <laughs> did you roll for Crumb for his, oh, uh, his initiative? And did you roll for Sif? Negative. Okay. Okay, so that real 15 for Crumb, and then my Eldritch Blast to hit was 16 for one beam. And then Sif? 16. 21. Nice. <laughs> a nat 20. Oh my Sif. gosh. What? So it's a proactive moth. Yeah. <laughs> He's just up there like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so, well, since I I forgot to ask that before we started, uh, Crum will go next, and then or Sif will go next, then Crum, and then we'll put them in their normal order at the next round. Might want to read up on Find Familiar again to refresh on what you can do with him. He drops an H bomb. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Use an object. He says as, hell. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Use an object is a an action they can do. So if you have one, 
You can kill us all right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Now, what was your attack? 16 for one beam. And then... Ooh, that one's better. 22 for the other. Oh. Uh, the first one does not hit, so it flies wild, uh, and you watch as it kind of, like, s- like skates by the tree uh, above Gil's head, just kind of, like, blasts through some of the branches. Mm-hmm. 16 um, doesn't hit the regular dudes? Is that who you're aiming for? Or are you aiming oh, for the main guy? Oh, I guess guy? I didn't specify. Um, I was aim. I probably was going to aim at the main guy. Okay, yeah, that doesn't Try hit. Take him for down. both of them? Both of the memes? Yes. Okay. Um, so damage was 14 for the one that did hit. Okay, 14. So yeah, he gets he gets immediately blasted by your uh your beam and it looks like he's like he whips a little bit, like he turns his head really fast to look in your direction and Gil and Fee give me an insight check and okay. as you can as well if you'd like. Also is are you supposed to move before you cast a spell? Does that You can matter? move after. Oh, okay. Yeah, I also got 16. Whoa. Weird. Whoa. Double 16 inside. Whoa. Oh, my God. Shit. Were you, <laughs> were you going to do inside as well, Niz, or no? No. Okay. Uh, so inside, both of you guys get 16. So at the same time, Gil, you're real close, and you see, see it, and he's staring directly at Fee. He, it looked like he was wanting to do some sort of countermeasure, but his eyes found the stretch in between you guys and it looked like that's what stopped him from doing anything but it looked like he was planning on wheeling on the spot to attack whatever had just blasted him and uh, but he was unable to do so okay well cool um so question I know when we questioned the guy I mean I guess you might not be able to answer this but I know when we questioned him he said that they Did he say they all have resistance to being charmed, or just the main guy? The main guy. Sick. Okay. So Um, it could be all of them, but you know for sure the main guy, the war chief. As a bonus action, let's see if I can... Yeah. As a bonus action, I would like to face step, if I can. Okay. And I'm just going to go right... Can I go here? Oh, on top of the hill? Oh, I forgot that's a fucking hill. Maybe well, right she? at the bottom. Uh, you can teleport 30 feet? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you can if you went at an angle, I guess. And then. Oh, I don't know if I want to go. Are you right able to do there. face step multiple times? Oh. Um, because I know you used it a few before when you were fighting the Gith. I can't remember what the. We took a short rest, though. No. Oh. Oh, we, yeah, we did. Yes, yes you did. And yep. she and it's short rest. This is a short rest. Okay, yep, good. Yep, yep, okay, yep. good, good, good. Um. Keep Except me honest. I might want to go. How deep is this water? Do I know? It's it's not very deep. It's like maybe an inch at most. Okay. Is this farther than 30 feet from where I was? Uh, or would that be in? Uh, 20, 20, 20, 20. 30 is where this guy is. The That one I just moved. So I can't do right next to him. Um, You might be able to because it's diagonal. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd actually go there. You want to be right behind him? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you... Face step, and you guys watch as Fee is just like, like strobe through the air, doing parkour with little flits of leaves in the wake every time you see like the after image appear. All right, is that she has a feature too? And then, um, immediately after using that, two creatures of my choice that I can see within 10 feet must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be charmed by me for a minute. So, I'm gonna go for these two babies right next to me for charmed. Yeah. It doesn't take effect. Or wisdom saving throws, yeah. It, it's a charm effect, though. Uh, this, they would become charmed. Yes. Yeah. It does not take effect. Damn. Would I have known that? No. Oh, okay. You just knew about the main guy. Yeah, oh well. Okay. Um, but now you know extra information. <laughs> okay. Anything else you'd like to do? Um, I might just whisper to Crumb. I know you're mad at me, Crumb, but if you can please just, like... Stay kind of close, but also kind of hidden. We might need your help in this. All right. Now it's Crumb's turn. What no, it's is Sif's turn. It's Sif's turn. <laughs> I was looking right at my sheet right before I said that. <laughs> S-I-F Crumb. <laughs> <laughs> I can read. Uh, yeah, so what's Sif doing? Sif is going to fly in the face of the big guy. Okay. And yeah. just try to distract and... Because he's got that illumination. So. Yeah. 
Gotcha. Just do the flappy flaps. But he's not he's not gonna physically attack, he's just gonna try to distract. Right. Mechanically okay. can't, help can't. action. Yeah. 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 Yep. Mm-hmm. Can't can't attack, unfortunately. Yep. All right. Excellent. There we go. So that'll give Nezra advantage, advantage. to attack. Actually, all of us ad- advantage. Yeah, anybody, yep. Aye. All right. So yes. this guy Good is job, surrounded <laughs> um, now by at least on all sides, except for the wall side. So. Whoa, man, I don't do moths. <laughs> <laughs> My you only weakness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's Crom doing? Yeah. So... You told him you want him to come near you? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I want him to stay close and try to be kind of sneaky if he can, I guess. Can Just he go stay. invisible? Oh, can he go invisible? He's have his sheet, right? his stat block. Go to extras. Oh, oh no, I've become then invisible. Extras, then type sprite. Now you can close. Oh, yeah, you can God. turn it. You can turn invisible until attacks or uh, cast a sprite. Until you cast a spell, attack, yeah, yeah, or yeah, until yeah, your yeah, concentration yeah. ends. Okay, but, yeah. yeah. I'll have him go invisible then. Excellent. Ideally, if, yeah. Okay, he's floating right by you. He hasn't said anything to you. Yeah. Um, oh, that's cool. You can so make man. them, like, yeah, that's yeah fun. transparent. Yeah, that's sick. All right. Is that it for Crumb? Yes. Okay. Nez. So, seeing, he's taking swipes at both the prince guy and... Gil at this point, right? Uh, yes. Okay. He's so. connected on me, though. Yeah. Ah, I don't like that. So, I'm, I'm gonna do an ice knife at him. Okay. All right. Have he, you done this yet? I have not. Cool. So, uh, are you doing second level or third level? Or sorry, first level. First level <laughs> or, or second level? I yeah. forgot. I was like, those are my choices. <laughs> first level, please. Okay. And. So it's kind of like a sub-zero thing, but I just basically flourish my hand out, you know, like I kind of like if you're think of it like a Harry Potter, if they had the wands, they're casting a spell, mm-hmm. but it's just my open palm uh, towards my target and instantaneously like an ice shard or a nice knife, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, forms and jettisons. Uh, toward at my target, and that is a dex save of fifteen. 15. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, Gil, I'm gonna need you to roll a dex save as well because this explodes and hits anything within five feet. Sorry. Oh. But also, you'll it's have to roll one of for, your choice. No, it's any creature within five feet. Yeah. Dex save, you said. Dex save of fifteen, and you'll have to roll for Sif as well. Okay. Sixteen. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah. So he didn't. He did not save against that. So he is hit uh, by that. Excellent. Uh, it just blasts underneath Sif, hits him, kind of explodes into these ice shards. The prince also does not succeed. He is busy now that he is a cluster of people behind him and the enemy in the front, and he uh, isn't paying attention. And a few glancing blows of the ice shards hit him. Gil, you are just barely to move out of the way as the <laughs> ice explodes in front of you. And let's see. He'll have... You said a dex save mm-hmm. for Sif? Yep. Okay, so he has plus one. Just roll a d20. Yep, d20 and then add plus one. Ah, 13. Shit. 13. <laughs> uh, so that is a hit. What is... Uh, there we what's go. What's Sif's... One. So oh. Sif immediately Sorry. pops out of existence. <laughs> I look at oh. <laughs> you, monster. <laughs> um, oh no. Yeah. And so Sif is now gone. Um, oh. Sif and died I did. doing what he loved, yep. being a distraction. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, got seven for damage on the ice knife. Okay. The excellent. So nice. he is also going to take seven. Okay. Yeah, uh, Nez, are you doing anything else with your turn? Uh, no, that is it. Okay. You hear a rustle from above you, and you hear Loom's voice. I'm low on arcane ability. However, Nezra, are you listening? Yes. I can borrow one from you if you will be so kind. If not, I understand. Can't spare a square. <laughs> <laughs> Can he take a packed slot? He cannot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we are 
We are in dire straits, buddy. <clears throat> if not, that is fine. I, I'm sorry, Loom. It's Loom, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Loom. I, I'm also feeling very short, and on on power. That's that is okay. I will, I, I will do something else. And he runs. Feels so terrible. <laughs> he runs uh, down to the edge of that out outcropping above you. Um, so he's overlooking the ravine. Uh, a little bit further down, uh, right at the bottom corner of it. Yep. And he pulls out a hand crossbow, and he takes aim, and he's got a better shot since Sif, he doesn't have to worry about Sif, and he fires at the Gith. Chieftain. And uh, Michaela. Higher, higher, low. Hi. Excellent. So his arrow misses and just sinks right into the like the water, but nothing else happens. So yeah, he yeah he was just like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this. Oh <laughs> shit! I'll fuck him up. I've got the high ground. <laughs> um, as we end that turn, uh, Gil, uh, what's your passive uh, perception? Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay, and uh, you're the only one right now that's next to him. You see that the uh, this Gith war chief like, is seeing all this, like, chaos around him, and, like, his eyes go a little wild, and he, like, you watch as his muscles kind of, like, contract in his legs, and he jumps straight up onto the platform, or the, the like, outcropping above you, and lands on the edge. It'll give you an attack of opportunity while he's jumping mm. away from you. Both you and the prince will get one. <clears throat> 16 is what I got. 16. Unfortunately, he's just a bit faster than you anticipated. And he... Wait. Oh, you don't have advantage on it anymore because Sif's gone. Well, I did because we were flanking. Oh, yes. Okay. But I still didn't do it. Uh, so, yeah. You miss him, uh, but you see a rake across his like legs from the prince. And the prince is able to connect... And it looks like he actually gets him pretty good. He's like, as he lands. And as he lands, he like stares down at you guys. And you just hear him. And that's the end of that turn. Can. Yeah. You guys are flying. uh, And then can will come from the right hand side. You guys are flying in the ship. Top speed. You start to see the area that is the cavern. And Madrigal looks over at you kind of apologetically. Um, what, what, what would you like to do? Well, how low can you get me? No lower than this. And you guys are about 100 feet in the air. Wow, you... It was damaged when we were dragging the, uh, the, the creatures in the magnet. All right, just open the door. <laughs> the door opens. Can I cast Earthbind on myself? Does it say you can cast it, or does it say it has to be another creature? Choose one creature you can see within range. I'll say that you can be that creature. Later. <laughs> <laughs> and do you just jump out? Yeah, I cast it on myself, jump out. <laughs> okay, so you guys, if you're paying attention, you see this craft up here in the air. The It's Madrigal's craft. The door flies open about 100 feet above you guys, and you guys just watch <laughs> can dive bomb out of there like a skydiver, <laughs> and then a beam of light, yellow light, like golden yellow light, suits up from the ground, kind of arresting her momentum, and then they start slowly floating to the ground. How long does it take to That's float to the ground on that? It's uh, 60 feet per minute, or for per round. Okay, gotcha. So in two rounds, you'll be, well, you'll be able to be there in the next round. So, uh, so yeah, you guys are just watching this beam of light. And actually, interestingly enough, you, Fee, notice that the three gith that are in front of you all like look up yes. staring at this beam like that just appeared out of nowhere and this is a you guys know what it is so you're not like super confused but wait do they know what it is Nezra and uh, Fee would know that it had something to do with you because they've seen it before okay and they you guys recognize the craft so even if you didn't know necessarily what can was up to you you could probably assume it had something to do with maybe something Madrigal was fucking around with but from a hundred feet away or I guess at this point, 40 feet away, uh, you guys notice that Can is, like, covered in objects that they didn't have before. <laughs> um, 
Like there's this badass skull cap, a flowing cape, a flowing robe, and a scarf like billowing in the air behind them. Damn, get them, can. <laughs> Fucking fashion show. <laughs> it just looks like clothes with pink sticking out. <laughs> but yeah, can is there anything else you would like to do? Do you have any bonus actions or anything like that that you'd like to do? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. No. Gotcha. And that beam, you can go ahead and put that beam right on the like the little bank landing area in between Loom and Nez. So this yeah, this yellow beam is shooting up next to you, Nez, uh, from the ground. Uh, like burst out of the ground and is like up in the air and you can see Can up there. All right. Uh, now we're back to the top of the order. It was Sif. Oh, question real quick. Yes. Um, when Billy, I mean, Nez, mm-hmm. did Ice Knife, mm-hmm. did you count the diagonal guy on the bottom left from him? Uh, no, I did not. Good nice. catch. Yeah. Good catch. Nice. And that was seven, correct? Seven yep. damage. Yes. All right. Um, yes. Excellent. Excellent catch. Uh, all right. So now it is uh, the prince's turn. He sees the... Uh, the guy jump up there. He swiped at him. He looks at him. He looks at the blood on his blade. And Gil, since you're so close, you can see directly into his eyes. You watch as there's like this red cloud that goes over his eyes as oh, he looks yeah. directly at him. And he says, you are my enemy. Okay. And the the war chief yeah, yeah, yeah. turns and looks right at him. And it, you can also see, like, the red cloud start to appear in his vision. And he doesn't break eye contact from him, but he you can tell he's referring to you, Gil. And he says, I will handle this. You all should figure a way of getting the Basidi out of here. This, I cannot defeat him. We cannot defeat him. But I can hold him off, if you will. Go. Why are you saying that to Gil? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's who he says it to. Uh, what's your passive perception fee? Um, thirteen. Yeah, you can't hear that. There's Good. A, there's a lot of chaos. <laughs> 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 but yeah, and yeah, the that was his turn. He doesn't move, but he did basically. D- he did something, and you can tell. You're not a hundred percent sure what it is, but yeah, there something happened. Um, but it is your turn now, Gil. How high up is the hill? Uh, 10 feet. Sorry, 15 feet. All right. I'm going to ignore him completely. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to be like, he's my enemy. And <laughs> I'm going to cast Zephyr Strike and run up the face of the hill. Okay. Fuck yeah. In a, like a snap speed. And then I'm going to try and hit him. And you're going to, uh, as you do that, you hear the prince go, No. And, uh, all right, go ahead and try to hit him. We'll have to learn the hard way. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. It's a nine. The learning. Uh, so, you, so you run up there and you miss. <laughs> uh, and, but you notice that you miss, but nothing seems to, like, he doesn't draw, his attention isn't drawn to you at all. He's still staring at the prince. So if he's distracted, can I get advantage? Uh, yeah, you can. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Just nah, fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fifteen. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> uh, it it still misses. Um, anything else you'd like to do, Gil? Uh, no, I can't. Okay, that was a bonus action. And All right, I did my action to attack. Well, now you're up there with him, and uh, now it is Crumb's turn. Okay, Crumb. Yeah, I'm gonna let him do his own. Thing. Why? Why? Why you do that with your thumbs? What? I can do stuff with my thumbs. <laughs> so Crumb's just gonna hang out for now, right by you, invisible. Um, yeah, I, okay. yeah. Okay. I don't know. All it's right. weird. So then, if it is his turn, would I be directing him during yes. that? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. the idea. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Um, I mean, I just tell him to, yeah, just to stay close and keep an eye on any other threats coming in. Okay. Like, see if anyone else comes up, so just to stay okay. perceptive. So you watch as he, like, vertically then maybe goes up another five feet, possibly, and, like, you, well, I guess you wouldn't see that. He's in, well, you, you will say that because you have the familial 
connection. Mm-hmm. He's like transparent to you, but everybody else would see him as invisible. And he watches, he like squints his eyes and holds his little bow out and like scans <laughs> the area above to make sure nobody's approaching. And you just hear like a hmm. <laughs> Uh, nothing else for Crumb. Then it is Fee's turn. Okay. Um, I'm. So are those two guys distracted by Ken? Would you say? Uh, for the moment, you would believe so. You will have advantage if you attack any of them. I'm going to cast Arms of Hadar. Okay. Gotcha. Hadar. It's a Hadarable. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she will uh, grab her necklace as like. These, it almost looks like these tre- tendrils that surround her, so they look kind of like these dark, smoky wings. Mm-hmm. And then they just outstretch behind her. Okay. And she moves her hands to, like, turn them. And then they turn into, like, a big jaw. Okay. And hopefully eat them up with some energy because it hits any creature within 10 feet. But it's a strength save of 15. So that okay. includes the prince. No, it does not. He yes, is within 10 feet of you. I can't control that 10 feet. It says all creatures within 10 feet. Mm. I feel that. Mm. Fortunately, the prince saves. Unfortunately, so do those two. No. What about the bottom one on the right? I have not rolled for them. Oh. The, however, the one the farthest away from you guys, that's on the like the other flank of mm. yep, mm. that one. Mm. Uh, he does not save. Okay. So, go for it. Okay. Eleven damage. Eleven damage. Nice. All right. So and it, what kind of damage is that? Um, necrotic. Necrotic damage. Mm-hmm. Ho ho! Hadar. Uh, Fee, what is your passive perception? My passive perception thirteen. 13. Uh, yeah. So Fee with a passive of thirteen, you notice something weird about when he is hit by that. You f- you see like just this extra wince. I will allow you as a free action to give me an insight check. Okay. Hell mm. yeah. <laughs> 13? 13. You're fairly certain that 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 attack did more damage than it normally would. Okay. Whatever conclusion you want to draw from that. All right. Okay. Um, Now, is that it for you? Yeah. Okay. All right. It is Nez's turn. Ooh, okay. All right. So, kind of being distraught at accidentally killing or dismissing Sif, uh, I'm going to run into the fray. Okay. And Who are you going after? I'm going to team up with Fee and okay. try and take on those guys, those three. Okay, so you're going to go like ab- yep. above them? In bet- so yeah, basically you're you, the prince, and Fee are kind of pinchering that uh, this top gith guy. Uh, he's starting to look a little <laughs> uncomfortable with the tight quarters all of a sudden. Sure. And then, I'm sorry to pause you real fast, Nez. Uh, can I forgot, I need you to roll initiative. Since you are now technically a part of the battle, I want to make sure that you're in when you need to be. You bet. Oh, I get advantage on initiative right now. Yeah, you do. 18. 18. Okay. So, you'll... you'll t- since I forgot to tell you that, you'll go next, but you'll be uh, right after Gil um, in combat. I'm still rotation. floating down, though, right? Yeah, but just FYI. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Nez. We're going to pop off point blank range Ray of Frost. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I kind of just take a stance almost like Kind of like when, you know, a football player, you get up to the, the line and you got like one leg behind you for stability. Mm-hmm. And I put both my hands out in front of me, kind of like in a Hadouken. A Hadouken. And the tips of my fingers all start glowing, Ooh, kind okay. of like a light blue. Nice. And uh, rays from all from the tips of all of my fingers. Uh, converge in the middle and then zap out at him. <laughs> nice. And uh, you get 2d8 on that, right? If you I know. do. Okay. And I'm assuming I have advantage since we're flanking? Yes. See Alright, so... Okay, well that's a 26. That yeah. definitely yeah. hits. Uh, and a 12. So yeah, 26. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, you fucking 
mm, just hit this dude so hard with this. Sweet. And damage, 2d8. Oh, max damage for 16. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah he, he is clawed up here by that, your, your ice. And uh, yeah, he's just kind of like reeling. Uh, he doesn't really make much of a noise, uh, but he is looking around very confusedly. Um, Doesn't that have another feature? Yes, too? I was just going to... Uh, the, 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 and that's cold damage. It's cold correct? damage. Yep. yep. And his speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of my next turn. Excellent. So, yeah, he, you could also see that, like, you see, like, little bits of frost have formed, like, on his the joints of his legs. <laughs> like, you rickety as if cricket to, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nez says menacingly. <laughs> uh, all right, Can, it is your turn. I thought Can was after Gil. Yeah. No, but because in the, uh, once the rotation starts again, but oh. s- since Can would have gone already, oh. I forgot to get. I see. Wait, hold on. Have I reached the ground? Uh, you will no. in this turn. Yeah. <laughs> so, Can, what are you going to do? You have now touched the ground. You're covered in, like, clothing, and you see up above you, Loom has a crossbow out. And the rest of your friends are all down there engaged with these gith. And I'm here? No, you are where that yellow... He, he, sorry, oh. I'll move you. What's right. that? That's Loom? Yep. You see that taking a lay of the land, uh, Gil and the gith war chief are up on this, like, 15-foot outcropping underneath a tree. Uh, the rest of everyone is clustered in this, like, uh, shallow water. It's like an inch deep. Like, there's three gith, and you see Nez and Fee are on one side, and this person you've never seen before (laughs) is also contributing. He's, like, this dark complexed individual with a big beard, ratty clothing, like, kind of like a really slouchy, like, handkerchief hat on top, and he's holding uh, guitars. What are these two doing? Uh, At at the moment, they are just, they've been moving slowly south. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> According to Billy, they're jerking each other off. Okay. If I could jerk us off for a second. <laughs> How far would you say they've moved? Uh, they would have. Uh, they're moving at like a casual pace, so whatever they're. Uh, so it would be 30 feet each turn. So we're on the. Second turn. Yeah, second turn. So. That's a lot of gif. Yeah. yeah so now is. they're no longer there, so. Oh. So. Well, shit. I mean, that's good. <laughs> Where are the good. kids? Uh, they're they're way in far, the cave. Yeah, as far as you know, they're in the cave. Where are they actually? That they're in the they're, cave. They're in the cave. Oh, they're you, still in the cave. But yes. you down here? I told them to no, wait up, up, up. Th- up there. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Okay. And you do see that this war chief is like glaring at this guy with the beard, though you probably don't have the context to figure out how. These babies are within 30 feet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to cast... So Fia, Fia and Nez are currently engaged with this one? Uh-huh. Okay, and these two are just kind of hanging? Yep. Okay. So I can see this guy, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. I'm sorry, I need to talk into the mic. So I'm going to cast Shape Water on that guy, okay. and I just want to kind of, like, uh, obscure his view Okay. with everything. So I'm going to cast it in, like, an upward okay. motion. All right. So you cast Shape Water around him? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that'll also block his view from Fee, at least. Correct. Okay. Where are you putting it? Bottom right guy? This oh. Yeah. So you're just basically creating like a, a cube of water around him? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Water wall. Just to throw him Seven. off his, his rhythm. All right. Whoa. <laughs> What? Nothing. She, <laughs> nothing. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. She kicked the stand and everything shook. Oh. Foot fidget. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bad foot fidget. <laughs> All right. So you've done that. Can, is there anything else you would like to do? No. Okay. Uh, can you hear Loom's voice from above you? Hey, Can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have any energy you could spare? <laughs> <laughs> can I get a quarter? <laughs> Hey, I'm, uh, gonna die. I, I'm currently unable to cast any spells, but I can. I have the ability to borrow some of your energy. We borrow it. We, we borrow and use it. You would lose it. 
So that's okay. So take it. Yes. <laughs> oh. Uh. So is that gonna like make me weaker? You will lose the ability to. He's basically saying he'll take one of your, one of your spells slots up. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm doing this because you helped me out when I was stuck in a bubble. Excellent. All right. And then he <laughs> sits down on the ground, cross-legged, puts both thumbs in the air and closes his eyes, and you feel like this electric like heat like travel through your body can, and you watch as this like orb of magic like just springs out of your body. It looks almost like a gelatin. Like it starts off energy and then it like solidifies and then and Loom opens his mouth and So that's what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> and stands back up. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll try not to make you regret it. Okay, just don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we are back to the top of the order. The prince is uh, staring at, like, deadlocked on this guy, uh, the chieftain, and he says, come to me. And that's all he does for that movement, uh, for that for that turn. Uh, Gil, it's your turn. Give me a th- an athletics check on the big guy. <laughs> As a natural 20. Oh, shit. Which would be a total of... Do you need 79. the total? Yes, I do need the total. Okay. Well, actually, I don't want to tell you the total, so I will ask you what is the beat. Does the 23 pass on him? Oh. So, no. Yes. Nice. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm using uh, my Zephyr Strike, mm-hmm. and I'm just going to uh, go up behind him. I'm going to just headbutt him with <laughs> my uh, horns, and I'm going to shove him off of the hill onto oh, his comrades yes. below. Hell okay. yeah. Yes. And I'm going to do at least uh, a D8 force damage. Okay. So my head glows with like purple energy, and I do like five force damage as I push him off of the cliff. Okay. Gotcha. It was I'm assuming that athletics you were trying for his. It was a shove attack. Okay, gotcha. Excellent. Okay, so you shove him. He is not going to take. Actually, give. What's your passive perception? Nineteen. Nineteen. You watch as the red light fades from his eyes, Gil, and he tumbles onto his companions. Let's see how well they do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The two directly beneath him, he, like, lands on top of them. And let's see, what will that be for damage here? I mean, he'll take fall damage, but, well, that's not that very far. Well, 10 feet, D6. So they will, I'll just give them the fall damage as well. So everybody takes one point of fall damage Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) as he, like, lands on top of them. And let's give them athletics here. They start drowning because he's happy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, uh, That'd be cute. He, he pins both of them down on the ground so that they're laying in a pile now. So they're all prone? They are all prone nice. at the moment. Anything else you'd like to do, Gil? I have double flip off all of them down there. <laughs> the prince looks up at you. That was not smart. <laughs> and I point at my, my brain at him. <laughs> Uh, all right, Can, it's your turn again. This is where you'll actually be in the rotation. Okay, I want to move closer. Okay. How much closer into who? Baby, let's get closer. I want to come, like, up by Gil. So you, he's up on a, he's on a 15-foot outcropping. And it takes, like, double movement to climb up. How high up am I? You're ground level. Okay, I'm not up on that. It's like a, an embankment, essentially. Okay. Looms above yeah. you about 15 feet as well. So. Hmm. And yeah, there's this column of water still up there, even though those guys are prone now. <laughs> if you're still... Con- oh, wait. are you? Is that a concentrate spell? The no. shape water? Oh, okay. So it just drops down. Is it like whipping them in the face so they feel extra defeated? I no, mean, it's it would, gone now. It would, Yeah, oh. it would have just like dispersed and oh, like, just dropped like normal water. Dang. Wait, does it? Just yeah, because it, it does it for that round unless you're, like, oh. holding it. Man. Like, continuing to cast it. That would have been cute. 
I do want to get closer. I'm going to go uh, down kind of like by Nez. Okay. Right here? Mm-hmm. Or, okay. Yeah. All right. What are you going to do? What are they doing? Uh, those three clustered, three of the gith, two, so two of the like normie giths are uh, <laughs> trapped beneath their war chief who has just been knocked off of that high ledge by Gil. Like he headbutted the shit out of him, keeping mm-hmm. in <laughs> in theme with this. <laughs> <laughs> Have to do it at least once. <laughs> and yeah, so they're currently all like in a pile. So any attack on them right now, if it's within five feet, would have uh, advantage. A double advantage. No such thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there is such on, thing, but I have not, advantage on attacks also. You can't triple stamp a double stamp. No, you can only get double advantage if you're an elf under certain circumstances. I'll be an elf. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'll do whatever, babe. Wild J, elf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to cast Thorn Whip. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's just do a on, classic. On the guy right in front of you? Yes. Okay. Get him. Get him. You should have advantage on that because he's like surrounded by yeah. everybody. Mm-hmm. And because I'm wearing my amazing clothes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> amazing clothes. Okay. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go. 18. Oh, yeah. We need an area of effect spell. <laughs> that would okay. be perfect right now. 18 to hit. Okay. That hits. Four damage. Four damage. All right. Excellent. He is not looking great at the moment. Does that have a pull to him thing or no? It does. Is it a strength save? If you pull the creature up to 10 feet closer to you. Well, he's right up against you. Yeah. I don't particularly want to pull him closer. (laughs) I just want to do some piercing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a little. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, All right. Anything else you would like to do, Ken? No, that's my turn. Okay, excellent. All right. Uh, it is now the fucking war chief's turn. And so he's going to struggle for a second and then stand up. And he looks up at you, Gil. I'm still flipping him off. <laughs> and he just <laughs> narrows his eyes. And then he hucks his spear at you. Okay. Natural Ooh. one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gil, Gil, high or low? Uh, hi. I'm going to do a spin move, too, oh, to spin away from the spear. Still flipping him off, <laughs> kind of like hopping on each foot like a matador. So, Gil, as a as a free action, I'm going to allow you to do, give me a perception check real fast. You perceive that he is disappointed in himself. At 13. Every 13. The throw was off. It's coming to your side already. You're fairly certain if... If you act quick enough, you can catch that. Oh, my gosh. All right. I'll do that. Okay. Give me a dex save. (laughs) Oh. 25. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. You catch the spear (laughs) as he throws it. Oh, my God. That's the most badass thing ever. (laughs) (laughs) Shove his ass up. He throws a spear at me. I Hey, like I got keep, your toy, man. Like, I want you to keep spinning after catching it and just huck it back <laughs> at his face. Oh, my God. I don't want him to get that spear back. That's mm-hmm. fair. Oh, yeah. my God. That's awesome. Though. Give me a wisdom save. All right. Is it a humanoid thing? It is not. Okay. <laughs> 17. <laughs> 17. Give me one additional, uh, I, I need an athletics, uh, or sorry, a strength save. S- strength save. Mm-hmm. Strength. Natural 20. Nice. God damn. 24. <laughs> so he lifts his hand in the air, Gil, and he clenches his fist, and you feel the spear jerk back toward him, but you stand your ground as this like weird effect started to like vibrate in your hands and make him feel like warm and almost numb, but then you were able to throw it off, and the spear attempts to jerk back to him, but you hold strong to it, so now you're just standing there with his spear. spear. <laughs> and he's just standing on his companions. <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole. All right. Uh, is he going to do it? Um, Billy, high or low? Low. Yeah, that's the end of his turn. Okay. Uh, is Crumb still just peeping around, looking? Um, actually, so Fee would see the fiery arm, right? Yeah. I've got an idea here. Um. Yeah. So, I'm going to think to him, he can, so he can feasibly carry a little bottle of something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A tiny one, yeah, a tincture bottle. 
Oof. I probably wouldn't have a second to take it out, though, would I? With people I, around me? I mean, you would on your... You could use an item and do, uh, on your turn. Okay. But he, it's his turn right now, so... Mm-hmm. <sighs> you could I'm have him hold him. his action. Okay, Crumb, I'm, so I'm going to think to him, I'm going to give you a bottle, and I want you to try to just dump it on the guy's fiery arm, the big guy. It, I, I'm just interested to see what might happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll try that out. I think you'll have fun with and it, too. And six seconds. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so he holds his action. I like the like trying to coax him like a child. I think he'll have fun too. <laughs> well, he's he's mad at me, so no, it, yeah. it's a little bit. I just I just think it's cute. <laughs> All right, Fee, it is your turn. Okay, um, so I will. So I'm going to Eldritch Blast, big uh, guy. Just, just FYI, yes, is that if you're planning on giving him a bottle? I need to do it first. That would be your action. Oh, my whole action to, u- to use an object is going to be your action. Okay, um, I'm going to try to just quickly and sneakily take out a bottle of this, like, bright blue glowing liquid. I'm going to try to be discreet. Okay. And then... Which uh, which which bottle is it? Alchemist Ire. Okay. That's what I called it. Okay. And so, you only have one of these, so... Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. And you pass it off to Crumb. Are there any bonus or bonus actions you'd like to do in the meantime? Decimate at ninth level. Yeah, I I would like to cast decimate, which does not take a spell slot. It just destroys them all. Right it's at now. will. It, it's a cantrip. You haven't heard about it. It goes to another school. <laughs> yeah, I think I might pass right now. All right, so Fee, you hand off this bottle. Crumb goes a goes a soaring over, and you you just want him to let like toss it. Yeah, or try just dumping it on him. I mean. At this point, that might be easier and more okay. of a sure way to hit it directly. All right. So, okay, so he uncorks this and dumps it out on his arm, trying to aim. And let's give a Wait, crumb. He's dumping it on himself. No, he's dumping it on the arm of the Fire creature, arm. the main one. Uh huh. Okay. Give me, um, give me, God, accurately. I think he, the guy who's being dumped on, would need to save from the thing this going is, yeah, down this on is him. A difficult one. Yeah, let's do that. No. All right. I want to be able to use advantage. Poop. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, he might have disadvantage because Crumb was invisible until he did it. That's a good point. Come on. Ooh, good thing uh, we did disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't, he's not really paying attention, yeah. and this bottle <laughs> pours onto his firearm, and you guys, anyone watching can see that it, it starts to, like, the flames start to just, <laughs> like, go out, sort of. It's like the flames are trying to break past some point, but his arm suddenly becomes frozen, and... <laughs> Covered in ice, as Fee has used her alchemist's ire. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> he like looks down at his arm, and he looks up at you, Gil, and he like looks, and then he looks around. Is that the end of your turn? Unless I can tell him to get out of there quick. Mm, no. <laughs> oh, please be smart, dude. <laughs> and uh, so he he sees his spear is in Gil's hands. His arm is now covered and he seems to be weighing some options. He's going to use it. He puts his hand in the air. You guys see this like little concentric circle and spiral start to form just off of one individual finger and this what like, color is it? it's like kind of a whitish it's like pearl-ish okay. Okay. and you it looks like fucking um like a diagram of some kind almost like uh, it's okay. it's uh like a vitruvian kind of thing yes All yes right. very much so and it starts spinning around in the air and the seal uh, essentially forms over him and his body starts to contort Ooh. and he starts to grow oh mm. and 
his everything just begins to like bulk out his form starts changing and you guys remember hearing that they had some form of monster with them some large creature well now you see it Mm. as he transforms into this like 10 foot tall 15 foot long beast well that has shadowy tendrils flickering off of it like black flame. Oh. It looks like some sort of combination of like a dog and a dragon, or like a wolf and a dragon. And uh, who has arcanic knowledge, uh, proficiency in it? Me. You guys can both roll. Yo. It will not be at advantage, but. 14? Mm. 17. Uh, Fee, you think you saw something like this before in a book, but yeah, it's hard to, You've definitely seen something like this before. You know, take a look. Mm-hmm. Nezra. It's in a book. It's in a book. In that book you read that we mentioned in a few episodes ago yeah. about astral things. Yeah. You recognize this creature. Oh, shit. This is a lesser, planar dragon uh-huh. that he has transformed into. What happened to the guys underneath him? Yeah, oh, they... Did- they are smashed. Nice. Oh. Okay. As he gets huge. One he, last thing no worry And he about. lets out this tremendous roar. And that's where we're going to end for the night. Ooh. Oh, shit. Eee. Okay. <laughs> uh, Did Jimmy Jones get here yet? I assume. No. It well, says well that... we have to finish the episode. Uh, <laughs> we're not done. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wonder if that dude actually thought excited. that Gil was going to run back into the cave and be like, hey, <laughs> run away way. now. I realized Mm-mm. I probably. Uh, he definitely did. Well, he's <laughs> a I'll tell you that. Fool. Even bigger fool than I. He should have told people with familiars because then they could have <laughs> ran back in. Well, well, he told the person closest to him that he'd had the. The only interaction with. That's true. With the this person who saved him. This is all on brand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is on Gildebrand, man. Mm-hmm. Now it's time for tonight's MVPC. Oh, what? what does that mean? The most valuable <laughs> player character. I want you guys to tell me who deserves an additional 1d10 of DM inspiration. Now, for those of you listening and for those of you here at the table, Nezra is one, Gil is two, Fee is three, and Can is four. On the count of three, I want you guys to hold up the number of fingers corresponding to the person you believe should become the MVPC. Now, I'll give you a moment to decide, and then we will vote. Does everybody know what they want? Yeah. All right. You good? You look. You had your concentration face on. No, I'm just <laughs> like making a stupid face. Take like, your concentration face off. <laughs> 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 One, two, three, vote. All right, we've got two votes for Gil and two votes for Fee. Tight. Nezra, why'd you vote for Gil? Caught that spear midair, man. That's badass. Very like nice. that alone, but then he also did the headbutt and the ah, thing. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked him off and fucking landed Very on his crony. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, excellent. Uh, Fee, why did you vote for Gil? Um, yeah, the obviously the axe stuff and how he wasn't backing down. Um, I, yeah, I thought that was good. He also just reminds me of like a kid who just keeps getting really, really lucky. And like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's fun. Mischievous scamp. Yes. That's Azul. Well, Dennis the Menace. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Gil, why did you vote for Fee? Uh, I thought using the potion was really cool and mm-hmm. utilizing her familiar that way. Um, activating the second form of the boss. Really cool. Excellent. Can, why did you vote for Fee? Yeah, I liked uh, that she was using Crumb and the arm freezing thing was very cool. Very good. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. That means tonight's MVPCs are Gildebrand Milani and Ophelia Raimadori. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Take your D6s. And on a honeymoon. Be Dixes. <laughs> what did Loom end up doing with my spell? You'll find Nothing out. Nothing yet. Ooh. It's not his turn yet. Yeah. Ne- uh, when we get back, it'll be it'll start with Nez and then it'll be Loom's turn. This probably wasn't the best time to pick a fight with like a big guy because I have one special. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Hey, but you, you have your best cantrip yeah. still That's forever. True. That's true. Is that blast? Yeah. Talking about Eldritch blast. Blast. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm so excited that fucking like Ray of Frost is a cantrip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so <Yeah>. OP. <laughs> yep. Especially now that I'm fifth level and it's 2D8. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's OP as shit, man. Cantrips are cool because they, they level up with you. You, yeah. can, you can't trip. So you can't. Is he <laughs> the o- These two are the That's only sorry. ones who are still alive? Correct. Okay. And that little Un- guy's And all these other on. guys were like, ooh, fireworks. Yeah, right I was going to say, until the other guys finally fuck off and are like, it's fucking nothing. <laughs> it's just a flashlight. Get him. <laughs> all right. That's it for tonight, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks to Adrian Von Ziegler for that beautiful background music. Thanks to all of you listeners. We really appreciate it. If you like what you hear, head on over to Apple Podcasts or really anywhere you listen to podcasts and where you're listening to this most specifically and leave us a review. We will read any review that you leave no matter what. If you want to give us a five-star review, we will not stop you, but we will appreciate it. What constitutes a five-star review? Yeah, add five stars. And then the fuck is this? <laughs> Gold <Or> standard. <laughs> worst Hardys ever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. If you'd like to uh, give us a little bit of extra appreciation, head on over to Patreon.com. Mm, I said that weird. Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash D20 underscore syndicate and consider making us warlocks. We've got a bunch of badass fucking bougie tiers that you can be a part of you can check out what we got we got swag bags we've got the ability to make an npc working with me that the characters will interact with in the campaign uh we've got bonus content behind the scenes content all sorts of good shit also uh we've got a discord and you can find a link to it in the episode description wherever you're listening to this and yeah Lindsay, what is it free it's free if you thought that it was $30 a month, you were wrong. If it's you thought free. it was $1 a day, you were incorrect. It is 100% free. Come hang out with us. Come have fun. We've also got merch. T Public. Merch. Wear D20 Syndicate. The end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking bye. <laughs> <laughs> that is it for tonight, folks. Thanks for listening once again. I am your host, uh, See you next week. I am your host and DM, Seth, and this is the D20 Syndicate Podcast, where we go on adventures so you don't have to. Bye! Bye. Hi, we're the D20 Syndicate Podcast, and we're fucking drunk. I had such a fucked up dream <laughs> oh, hit us. that I'm remembering now. Um, so Lindsay and I lived in an apartment. It seemed like a New York apartment. Me, Lindsay? But it, yeah. Like and a loft? It, yeah. And it's <laughs> and Lindsay it was, Lohan. It was smaller. <laughs> you never know. Uh, one of her aunts was there, but it isn't one of her real aunts. It was like a, oh. a dream aunt oh. who's like uh, like Mike Myers with the, the hair and the makeup <laughs> and all that. The verklempt. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. Yes. She was there, and all of a sudden, there's a fucking, there's two wolves that show up into the apartment. Like, I look over, and there's two wolves in the corner, and then a bear comes in. I'm the bear. Uh, huge bear. Um, <laughs> takes out the ant immediately. We go, in, <laughs> we go into the, the bedroom, oh, okay. and we just leave them to the living room. Uh, okay. They don't try and come in right away. Uh, I call, I think, Seth. Yeah, I call you, and I'm like, hey, there's a fucking bear here. What do we do with a bear, Seth? Oh, <laughs> Seth. So- and then a phone starts ringing in the pocket of one of the wolves. <laughs> That'd be a the fucking pocket? twist. But no, like, the wolves aren't a thing anymore for the rest of the dream. But hmm. yeah, Seth is like, I got this. This is fine. And then he <laughs> comes to, <laughs> he comes to the apartment 
and I like open the door like to peek out. Like for some reason the front door is unlocked. He comes in and he just walks up to the bear and it just fucking <laughs> goes like the revenant on him. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he does nothing to stop the bear. He's just like tearing him to shreds. Oh, oh my fuck again. <laughs> I just go back into the bedroom and then the, the bear starts trying to open the door and that's when the dream like, Oh, call your friend on me, huh, motherfucker? <laughs> I got I, thumbs now, bitch. <laughs> I took his thumbs or my stapled them onto my bear claws. But you looked so casual when you were coming in, like, oh, this is just one of those New York bear situations. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Not a New York bear situation. Wisconsin bear situation. Oh, oh yeah. Damn. Got fucked Man, up. Man, you have fun. Mine are always like really long and drawn I was out terrified. and obscure. It was not fun. Yours was immediately like shit was going on like it still had all the the tension and terror of a bear being nearby like imagine that in real life like the feeling of a bear being there so you woke up rested no <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's safe to say mm -mm. yeah, yeah. Wow. and then i started thinking about like bear scenarios like i don't think i could fight a bear Some at all no, like, no. but then i'm like if we're at a campsite the bear is focused on my family there's a ledge right by the bear. What if I ran and just threw my body into the bear? Would we both go tumbling down the cliff or is it just too big? And I just do the you Dep bouncing it, off of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it depends on the bear. I think you could do it to a black bear, not a brown bear. Yeah. 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 Black bear might, you might have that. Yeah. Cause that, they're not as voluminous. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're smaller and they won't leave you alone unless you like show aggression. aggression yeah. The, the, what is the adage? Uh, if it's black, fight back. If it's brown, lay down. If it's white, good night. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I go to bed. Polar bears will <laughs> fucking you. eat you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they will. You will have no chance of fighting them. You cannot outrun them. They will eat you even if you're pretending to be dead. Like, yeah, because they're fucking easy for starving them. up there. Everyone's taking away their fucking ice houses and shit. <laughs> Pissed off for I've good been reason. Surviving on ices, they're not even flavored anymore. I don't even get <laughs> and penguin Coca -Cola. guts. Cola. They've <laughs> evolved. <laughs> with Coke. They've evolved to to pulling walruses out of the water with their claws. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's sad though. Walruses are very cute. It's sad that it's come to that. Yeah, there was a video where it showed the chocolate like milk Antarctica. Yeah, it was <laughs> and well, how bad it is. Yeah, though. there was a guy. He must have been like a researcher or something, but he was like in this little pod. And the polar bear like spotted him and was just like, I'm going to fucking eat you. And so then it's it's like over 15 minutes of this bear just like trying t its best to break into this pod <laughs> to eat this guy. God. And it's so fucking harrowing. <laughs> I would just shit like all over that pod. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> sugar. Seth, do you ever like try and scare Mika? Like sh jump out of the. I don't darkness? try. I just yes, accidentally do all the time. <laughs> what all sound does time. she make normally? <sighs> oh, yeah, because Lindsay does like a shriek gasp thing, mm. but I just hopped out of the in front of the fridge as Michaela's coming out of the bathroom, <laughs> and she went huh. <laughs> like, <it was> like, <laughs> yeah. No, because I I knew you were there, so I was gonna uh, like scare you too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a Stallone grunt. <laughs> yeah it's usually pretty quiet it's usually a more physical reaction like i just watch her like kind of like you know recoil <laughs> i did it twice on accident last night i was just opening a door that she was on the hallway <laughs> <laughs> 